The, the promoters of this Greek translation, this Septuagint, have to figure out what to do, have to counter the criticisms. And the first person we know to try and counter the criticisms is an Alexandrian Jew by the name of Aristeus. And he writes a long story that we have in a text called the Letter of Aristeus. And the key point of the story is this. Uh, Ptolemy II, a pharaoh, uh, has just created the library in Alexandria, which is the great library of the ancient world. And it only has Greek texts in it. But he hears about this great Torah of the Jews and he wants a copy. So he writes a letter to Jerusalem to the high priest at the temple and he says, hey, why don't you send me some translators? And uh, we'll have them translate your, your, your scriptures and we'll put it in the library along with all the other great literature of, the, of, of our age. And so 72 men are sent by the high priest according to Aristeus' story. Um, they're all wise, they're all learned uh, in every sense that you can come up with for that, for the meaning of those two words. And they show up in Alexandria, the pharaoh tests them, they all you know, pass the test with flying colors about how brilliant and thoughtful and uh, etc. they are. And they all go out to the island of Pharos uh, where they are have you know good working conditions it's quiet you know they're not being bothered by the noise of the city and so on and every day they sit down and they pool their knowledge and their expertise and their wisdom and in 72 days they create the Septuagint. In fact Septuagint if you think about it for a minute actually comes from the word for 70 okay referring to the translators. Now did that work? You know, we had, we had this great translation made by the best of the best, 72 of the best of the best. Uh, does that quell the criticism? No. So about 200 years later, 150 years later, a guy by the name of Philo Judaeus, who is a Alexandrian Jew, rewrites Aristeus' story. Uh, you know, it's pretty much the same deal with one minor change that really changes the way the argument works. The 72 men come, they make a good impression on the pharaoh, they go out to the island, and every day they start their work by going to the ocean, by purifying themselves with water, by praying to God for guidance that he will help them, and then each one goes to their individual shack, shed, translating hut, whatever you want to call it, and they translate for several hours, and then they come together, and it turns out that all 72 of them have it translated exactly the same. And here's what Philo has to say about that. Like men inspired, they prophesied, not one saying one thing and another saying another thing, but every one of them employed the selfsame nouns and verbs as if some unseen prompter, hint, hint, had suggested all their language to them. In every case, exactly corresponding Greek words were employed to translate literally the appropriate Aramaic words. So the point that Philo was trying to say is that the translation is inspired. Just as much as the original Torah was inspired and given by God, so the translation is inspired and given by God. Not once, but 72 times through 72 different translators, all exactly the same. So if you think there's a difference between the Septuagint and the original Hebrew text, that's fine, because both are translated.